What's made you almost actually walk out of work? I was, still am occasionally, a shopping cart retrieval tactician at a local grocery store. My manager was a C, no one liked her, including the DM, whom no one also likes. I was pushing all the carts in on an extremely busy Sunday morning, working the normal 7.30 to 4 shift. I get a drink, as I am extremely thirsty from the constant onslaught of carts and she tells me I'm slacking off. Trish, we'll call her from this point on as that's her name, piles on a list of tasks I have to get done before I take my first break. We get 3 breaks 15, 30, 20, and I try to work diligently. I complete them take my break, and get back out early because all the carts are gone again. I refill my drink. We have an argument. She claims I was slacking when I was sweating profusely in the beginning of winter. I'm pushing carts through 2 inches of slush while she piles on more tasks. She assigns me to start stocking dairy in between cart runs. I can't do the dairy as I'm constantly pushing carts. I miss my lunch break by 2 hours. Once she notices the dairy was skipped, I get paged into her office. After the union rep comes in to try to help, he leaves once he realizes it's hopeless. I throw my hat at the sea, hitting the sea in the sea and walk out after saying frick this. The next week she was fired, I was reinstated. I go to college, and come back on winter break to find I couldn't get any hours because I was technically fired because my paperwork wasn't completed. I gave the schedule to her, and she must have tossed it before she left. I was rehired in the summer because the hiring manager realized this mistake. TL. DR. C. R. I was once a shopping cart retrieval tactician, although I referred to it as, plainly, cart B. I worked at a vet clinic as a vet assistant. It was a small clinic so we all had keys and codes to get into the clinic anytime. I also lived 2 minutes away, so I'd be the one that came in to take care of everything when there was inclement weather. ETC. I brought my dogs in one Saturday afternoon after the clinic was closed and everyone went home to use the groomer's tub to give them baths. This was absolutely allowed. I used my own shampoo. After the bath. I tidied up the worst of the mess and took the dogs home to dry instead of messing up two kennels and was going to come back to clean up completely. When I got home, I found out my grandmother had passed away and as such, forgot about returning to the clinic to finish cleaning up. About a week later, the groomer passive aggressively brought it to everyone's attention during a staff meeting that she had to clean a mess Monday morning and that we should clean up after ourselves. I kept my cool and confronted her after the meeting. I explained to her what had happened and that I was sorry that she had to clean up after me. She said she didn't care about my grandmother passing away and that I was lazy and irresponsible. I lost my crap and walked out. One of the vets ended up apologizing to me on her behalf the next day. TL. DR. Groomer at work called me lazy and irresponsible after my grandmother passed away. Oh frick that. Someone would have gotten a massive sea punt. At my first job one of my managers overheard that I'd found a new job and was leaving soon. So he scheduled me every day for the next week for 3 hours in the middle of the day. The first day I was scheduled to work, I walked upstairs, took off my shirt, and asked where he wanted it. He looked confused, so I told him I'd found another job. I threw it on his desk and left. That walk down the stairs and out the front door was one of the most satisfying feelings I'd ever had. I walked upstairs, took off my shirt, and asked where he wanted it. Cue porno music. We were about to lose an important client. The manager builds up a strike team of 20 or so personnel to solve the problems making our client unhappy. He then declares everyone on this team will work on Saturdays and will report to an 8am daily status meeting until crisis has passed. Working on Saturdays was a pain in the butt particularly when it became apparent that this was only for show for this manager to show his boss that he was working hard to solve the problems. Within a couple of weeks I had done all I could involving the crisis and spent my Saturdays working on unrelated non-urgent tasks. The straw that broke the camel's back was seeing him saunter in one day at 9.30am looking well rested after everyone else had had to show up at 8am daily status. I quickly found a new job and handed in my two weeks. On my last day, they had a yay we saved the client party. They lost the client a year later. I worked in a call center. 
We had a really big snowstorm a little over two years ago. The storm started around 10 a.m. and they didn't allow us to leave until 6 p.m. when there was about a foot of snow on the ground. It took me two hours to get home that night in my little car. I called the weather hotline the following morning to see if we were closed and we were not, so off to work I went. As I am pulling into the parking lot I see people walking back to their cars. I asked what was going on and was told that essential personnel had to stay, which was me. I go inside the building and there are no lights on and it is really cold in there. I walked to my desk and saw that my team was all bundled up in coats, hats, gloves, etc. While working, they were using the generators to power the computers and phones, but apparently light and heat were unimportant. I worked a 10 hour shift in a 40 degree building in the dark. This was not the only thing that made me want to leave. We were required to work at least 10 hours of OT per week. I am a student and missed a midterm because I was told I would be fired if I did not come in on my day off. I was late to work one day because there was a house fire and the road I took to get there was closed. I was called into HR and was told that I should have planned ahead for this and that if I was late again I would be fired. I came to this job as the result of an acquisition. When myself and the other acquired employees came we were asked to put in our vacation requests for the year. None of us were approved for leave at Thanksgiving, Christmas or the 4th of July. We were told that the current employees had already been approved for that time and they didn't have the capacity to approve more. I ended up leaving there and taking a temp job that led to an awesome position with a great company. Those people can suck it. Comma I was late to work one day because there was a house fire and the road I took to get there was closed. I was called into HR and was told that I should have planned ahead for this and that if I was late again I would be fired. You were told to plan ahead for a house fire. Holy crap that is like Dilbert pointy haired boss level of stupid. I was 16 working at McDonald's. It was my first morning shift and I had worked there a month. Anyone who works at McDonald's understands how our bun toaster works. Essentially during the afternoon lunch dinner period you put buns in one way and during the morning you put muffins and bagels in the opposite way. But for some reason I could not remember how to properly do the muffins this morning. I ruined an entire bag of them. Like 3 bucks worth of muffins. The manager threw a fit about the financial waste and was extremely difficult and rude during this training period. They took me off muffin duty for a bit due to a rush. Some time after the rush had ended a manager came over to have me transfer back to toasting so she could break a coworker. Only instead of simply being kind to me she asked in a rude manner. Can you handle toasting for 30 minutes? I responded in kind because I'd already had enough. I dunno. Can you handle talking to me like an adult for 30 minutes? She told me to go home. I started to walk out in frustration. However the store manager had seen everything. Looked at her and said you asked for it looked back to me and told me it was my choice and if I went home I could come back without any issues or penalty. TL. DR. Store manager laughs at my smart assery. I worked at Ikea as a cashier and they have a pretty strict no cell phone policy. Which is fine. I agree that it's unprofessional to be on your phone while working. It was early on a Sunday morning, zero people even near the checkout line. I'd forgotten to leave my phone in my locker, and I realized this and pulled it out quickly to turn it off so it wouldn't ring while customers were around. The general manager happened to be walking by and she says loudly you have got to be kidding me she walks over with her hand out and tells me that either I hand over my phone to her or I'm fired. This was extra ridiculous because it's not like I was a repeat offender or anything, nor did she ask for an explanation. She literally just saw me standing there with a phone halfway out of my pocket. I gave her my phone, could not afford to lose the job at the time, and when she walked away I called over my cashier manager. She got the phone back for me because the GM is in charge of the entire store and so I had no clue where my phone would be or when I could find her to get it back. I was so angry the rest of the day, she treated me like I was a naughty middle schooler, not a grown employee, and I'm not even sure it was within her rights to take my property like that. TL. DR. Manager confiscated my phone like I was a naughty middle schooler when I was in the process of turning it off so it wouldn't disturb customers. I was working the closing shift at a pizza place and the power went out less than 5 freaking minutes before it was supposed to end. We couldn't cash out due to not having power, so my manager called the owner to see what we could do. He asked the owner if we should just close up and cash out the next morning. 
The sucker said no he'll come in and see what I can do. I had to wait 45 minutes. When he came in, it was 3.45 am at this point. He said well, I can't cash you out so just come in tomorrow. I almost quit on the spot. 45 minutes of free money. My boss stole my lunch, docked me an hour's pay for a lecture on corporate liability regarding employee health, and ate my lunch while giving me the lecture on how I'm not allowed to not eat during my lunch break. She also suggested that the reason I wasn't eating my lunch was that I was too poor to afford food but too rich to qualify for food stamps. She even went so far as to offer me a pay cut so I could get the aid I needed the next time she stole my lunch. I worked at a pizza place that didn't cook the food, but we prepared the pizza for you to take home and cook yourself. The owner of the store had hired a new GM that was a terror. He continually messed with the schedule throughout the week, favored the employees that he hired, and cut the hours of the senior workers. On top of all this management heck, he was never online and stayed in the office watching clips on ESPN. Needless to say, the man was worthless and had a big ego about being top dog. After two months of trying to balance school with a crappy work environment, the assistant manager and I began talking about leaving as a joke, just to get through the day. We had just purchased D20s for some D&D and decided to let the roll of the die decide if we stay or go. If we rolled a 10 or higher, we leave. Any lower, and we stay. A few shakes later and the dice are in the air. An 18 and a 13 are rolled. The assistant and I finish our prep, clean the store, and leave at 2 p.m. The general manager returned around 3.30. He was prone to taking long lunch breaks, sat in the back of the office, and didn't move the entire night. One of our former co-workers told us the GM had the saddest look on his face, but even though they were short-staffed, he refused to go up to the line and help. TL. DR. I left my fate to the roll of a die and pizza. I would have been jumping up and down if you both rolled natural 20s. I took 3 days off of work when my mother in law passed away early last month. When I came back in with the proof and all the stuff the company needed I was told that time off is only intended for immediate family. And then they went on being bigger buttholes than I thought possible in that kind of situation. I got into a huge screaming argument with the owner about how fricked up that is. Ended up telling him off. And went the frick home. For good. I was a shift manager at a fast food joint. It's a Sunday, and the owner showed up after church for no reason. I had been managing the Sunday shift for two or more years without him ever showing up. This particular Sunday we had myself and all of the other, three, shift managers on duty with me being the primary one. He storms in and asks why we didn't have such and such done. I calmly replied that it would be done at closing. We're good. He then asked why we only had three dos up. We made our own bread fresh each day not Subway BTW. And I said we didn't want to waste his money on a slow day and that what we had should be plenty. He didn't like that one bit. He changed out of his Sunday best and into a uniform and proceeded to start mixing up dough. I promptly clocked out, handed him my uniform, and left. He chased me into the parking lot, asked me why I was leaving. I told him I quit and that he was being an arrogant butthole, and that I would pick up my last check on Friday. He begged me to stay. My uncle saw the whole thing as he had brought the family to eat, intervened and offered me a job at his place in front of this guy. Short story of follow up, owner didn't get to take his vacation as I was scheduled to take his shifts and the other managers refused to fill in because they saw what happened and all agreed with me. While it's cool they got their comeuppance, everyone has bad days, and maybe that guy was on one. I was a butcher and had told my boss a month in advance that I had a test and wouldn't be able to work too late one day. Well my co-worker fricked off all day and they expect me to finish her job and do mine and do the final 2 hour cleanup. Well by the end of her work and 75% of mine it was closing time so I left everything to rot overnight. The next day they proceeded to yell at me for 20 minutes and when they were finished I told them that they next time they a say anything to me in a raised voice or b expect me to do that b work i'm out i should have left then i had been working at this one daycare for three one stroke two years at minimum wage i was one of the main teachers in the infant room one years old not one of the teachers who just gets put wherever they are needed i was one of the few reliable people i rarely called in sick i was always on time 
I always did my job. Meanwhile, we had the newly hired girls making $8 or more. In that 3, 1 stroke 2 years of making $7.25, I was not given a raise until I handed them for it. I had to put in a request where I said how much of a raise I would need, with recommendation letters from the parents, and then wait. I waited for 4 months before they finally got back to me. They, the higher ups, gave me a whole 25 cents for my 2, 1 stroke 2 years. After talking to my boss about it, she agreed that they should have given me more. She said that she could try and request something better. I never heard another word after that, and I almost quit then. Fast forward to about a year later, I'm still there. I finally decided to give this whole raise thing another go, except this time. I mentioned in the letter that if a raise was not possible, I would need to find a job that would pay more. I waited through two pay periods and heard nothing from them. Finally, when we got our paychecks, I was still making 25 cents above minimum wage. I turned my two weeks notice in that day, and then, you'll never believe this, they started offering me the raise. It was incredible to finally be taken seriously. By then, though, I was so fed up with everything that I stuck to my guns and waited out the last two weeks. The icing on the cake was that my mom had worked in the infant room for the past 16 years, and finally quit to start her own business at home. They lost two of their best employees within two weeks of each other, and all because they they like to keep their money. After spending four months without a job, I finally found an excellent student worker job making more than I would have with a raise from the daycare. Feels good man. I had a meeting with adept, about eight older white men to go over some strategic planning and surveys I was doing for them, and they treated me like garbage even though I was very humble and emphasized I was seeking their feedback to make sure everything would accurately depict their depth and fit their needs. I even brought donuts to this meeting because I was supposed to present at the end of their long morning meeting and figured they might be hungry. The talk down to me, interrupted me rudely, and called me young lady. I remained professional until the end and then turned to leave. The head of the dep said oh, and thanks for the donuts and then guffawed at me. I crap you not. This man laughed at me and a bunch of his cronies did too. They got what they deserved. Three were fired and two quit because this incident got out. The two quitters were very decent people who were so amazed by how I was treated they told other higher ups. Karma. For the win. My girlfriend and one of her best girlfriends worked together at a small local restaurant in my town. Their boss and manager, let's call him Boyd, was around 50 years old, and he would sexually harass the younger hostesses waitresses. Keep in mind my girlfriend and her friend are both 18, so of course they were victims of it. My girlfriend would always tell me how this guy would come up and whisper into their ear, very sexually while no one was looking, while trying to get his hands all over them. But my girlfriend said this dude was massive. So all the younger girls were afraid to stand up and do anything about it. So one night, my girlfriend's friend was working the hostess stand alone. And it was a slow night. Not many customers. Boyd comes up behind her, grabs her by the hips, and freaking bites her ear. Sexually, not like causing physical harm, and tried licking her neck. She turned around. Punched him dead in the freaking eye, giving him a black eye, and she called the cops on him. Needless to say, he got fired, sued, and both my girlfriend, her friend, and almost all the female employees there quit on the spot, and now the place is going out of business. The crap some people do. I'm glad all of my bosses have been freaking sane. After they reduced 401k matching, after they reduced our health insurance, after they implemented a new attendance policy, after they threatened termination for missing stats. I got a new job as a credit controller a few years ago, however, we had to do 2 weeks training about 100 miles from where the job actually was. I had to drive there the first few days on my own, before I was asked by my new manager if it was okay if I could take a new colleague that had started that day as it would be easier for her as she didn't drive. As she was a drop dead gorgeous Spanish girl I immediately said yes. Anyway, a few days into me taking her on my commute to work, we actually get on really well. Unfortunately however, I have a girlfriend and was only interested in friendship. She however, had other plans. Believe me if I was single I'd have been all over her. 
She knows I am not single, but seems to try really hard to flirt with me. Towards the end of the second week we are stuck in traffic on the way back from work. She proceeds to rest her head on my shoulder and say she's tired. Okay, bit awkward but no big deal. What was a big deal was her hand was gradually going further across my leg towards my dong, cue boner. She then tries to undo the zipper on my trousers. A hand job on the M25 in loads of traffic sounds nice, but again I'm committed to my girlfriend, so I ask her to move over and stop in quite a stern manner. Alas, awkward silence for the entire ride home. Next day, I walk into work on my own as the girl texts me to say she had called in sick that day. I immediately get pulled into the boss's office and told that there have been allegations of sexual harassment against me. I then completely flip the frick out. Partly because it took a lot of self-restraint to reject such a hot girl and partly because I was pee she had told the boss that I had been coming on to her. I explain what happened. Told him to frick his job and walked out. Never heard from any of them again. I assumed she cracked and told the truth eventually because they paid me in full for the two weeks and didn't mention anything about police or disciplinary action. TL. DR. Two weeks on training for a new job included an attempted hand job and lots of bulls. The corporation I work for went from a decent healthcare plan to two separate awful ones, saying they couldn't afford not to. Meanwhile, they made 16 billion the year that they decided to make this change. Additionally, they gave folks in my group a 23 cent an hour raise again. After 16 billion in profit, cited a rough economy and poor job market as the reason. Meanwhile they're offshoring jobs which is pretty much actively contributing to the things they're complaining about. Haven't left yet, but I am working on figuring a way out. I just started a new job two weeks ago. It's for home care so awesome. No more crappy nursing homes. In the interview they tell me that they have had a lot of people quit suddenly on them. Blah. Blah. They set me up with two awesome clients. I'm going to be their regular caretaker. Six hours a day. Cool. After the second day of work, I got off about 3 p.m. At 10 p.m. I had seven missed calls from them. I called them back thinking it was important. Nope. Just wanted to call and let me know they'll see me tomorrow. What the frick. That's weird. So a few days later I get another job for the weekends. Tell my boss I need one day off to train. He's clearly annoyed but doesn't say anything. Next day I go to my other job and then call him to see when I come back in. Two days later I go back and he lets me know that they've taken me off my two clients, which wouldn't have collided with my other work schedule, and I now have one client for 2 hours a day for 5 days a week. I drive 30 minutes there and back for this job and I don't get reimbursed for gas mileage which is usually the norm. I'm annoyed so over the course of the next few days they start calling my mom and stepdad to get a hold of me. They were listed as my emergency contacts. Why are they calling my emergency contacts for non-emergency type stuff? In any case they were acting all psycho so I called them a few days ago and told them I wasn't coming in anymore. I was losing money working for them. And they were acting like a crazy stalker ex-boyfriend. At my place. My boss is just in butthole. He is very stern. He isn't afraid to fire anybody and he gets very angry when we use our very limited vacation days. In fact. We only get 12, give or take, vacation days a year, and we don't get many holidays off. So then, this guy disappears for like a month, 28 days, to be precise. And when he comes back he explains to us that he needed a vacation. So he went to Cancun for a month. I almost quit that day. I was once told I would be fired for taking 2 days off and paid leave, even though it was okayed a month in advance. Left that job to deliver toilet paper and urinal cakes. Easily the best job I've had in many years. Not the best paying but the funnest time I've had as a delivery driver. At my current job I was recently thrown under a bus. Figuratively of course. And I'm now re-evaluating my career choice as this job field has in recent years become more and more out of touch than from when I began. I am currently updating my resume and browsing online job resources. While on company time of course. I used to work for a major corporation that deals with phones. I am a computer programmer. The team I was on would ever once in a while need to go to budget meetings. 
I have no clue why, but we did. They talked about laying off an entire section of people. It is understandable, since that happens sometimes. What happened next got me in trouble though. After they talked about the layoff, one of the executives looked at another and said, So Bill, it sounds like you are finally getting that bonus you wanted. It was inferring that he laid off an entire section of employees to give himself a bonus. I got up in the middle of the meeting and walked out. I got written up for insubordination for leaving a meeting that had executives. I explained it to my boss and told him I did not want to work for a company that did that. He talked me into not quitting and said that he was forced to write me up or else he would have let it slide. Comma I explained it to my boss and told him I did not want to work for a company that did that. He talked me into not quitting. Your P. This is going to be long. I worked in a call center. Troubleshooting email and internet connection issues for various small telcos around the US. I had worked there for 2 years and the amount and variety of work we did was rising steadily. At one point the company took a 1 month contract with the manufacturer of a video phone device for the hearing impaired. This had nothing to do with troubleshooting internet or email or anything else in our job descriptions. Our role was not even to support this device in any way. We were receiving calls from people who were interested in pre-ordering the device. It was not yet released. Nearly every call was from a person with hearing impairment. In order to communicate over the phone, they had to use a relay service, where they would type to an operator. The operator would read what they typed. We would reply to the operator, and the operator would type back to the customer. These calls usually lasted 30 plus minutes, in a job where you were pressured to keep your calls at or under 10. It gets worse. Our company was not certified to handle credit card numbers. This meant that we could not actually take payment and submit orders for these people. We took down their information, what products they wanted, and submitted it to the manufacturer. Then we would tell the customer that a representative from the manufacturer would contact them within two weeks to finish the sale. There was nothing about this job that could not be accomplished by a simple form on the manufacturer's web page. It would have been much easier for the person ordering. It would have saved my company the hassle. And it would have saved the manufacturer money. When our company decided to make this a full term contract. Instead of month long. That was it. Myself and three co-workers who had been there for two years were fuming. We met in the parking lot and just complained about it for an hour. We didn't walk out. Though. We did. However. Find another place that was hiring. For more pay. And all four of us were working there the next week. TL. DR. IT job turned into crappiest sales job, quit, but didn't strictly walk out. For the last 3 years I've been working in doggy daycare kennels. I generally have a great attitude, I work hard and take on responsibility and I developed a reputation for being able to safely handle the most reactive and unruly dogs. The first kennel I worked at, I was there for 9 mo. I watched the GM blatantly disregard customers, let her child wander in the back unsupervised, even let her hang with a dog that was known for biting staff and had a record for biting a kid, and continually understaff us during peak holidays. Christmas Eve it was me, my ops manager, 300 dogs and the elevator was busted. Two people for what should have been 8, 1 hour play groups. 20 special care dogs with 15 minutes outing. Dogs who can't be with other dogs. Feeding, meds, baths and customer service. A month after the holiday they brought in higher ups asking our opinions on what needed to be changed. I voiced my opinion in, as professional and concerned, tone as I could. Being sure to steer clear of accusatory stories and babbling curse words. A month later I was fired for theft. If knew me, you'd know how slanderous and preposterous this is. The only reason I didn't quit was because I was trying to find another job first. I did get to collect unemployment. They didn't press charges or deny it, all very suspect. I recently quit my last kennel job. After a 1.5 years there, constant understaffing, a neurotic and confrontational owner and a schedule that would be released a day or two before the new work week would start. I watched several times as the GM office manager and the back of the house manager would laugh it up and goof off at work. Also, there is a total of 7 people. Why are there 3 managers? In Jan I requested one random Saturday off. 3 weeks in advance. I never ask for time off. I was told no. I also requested to change my avail that same month. I was lucky and landed a dog training internship. 
I was told no problem, but when the schedule came out, it didn't reflect my availability change. When I professionally asked what happened, my GM said that she felt like I was slapping her in the face. I worked 80 hours a week there, including doing 4 out 7 overnights every week, sleeping at a poorly ventilated, cold facility with tons of excitable, scared, anxious and cage-free dogs, is not a easy night's sleep. I bent over backwards for that place and they tramped all over me. Forward 3 months later I attempt to request another Saturday off, this time putting a request in a month in advanced. A week before the sh** comes my GM says no, but if I could please also cover so and so's shift and switch shifts with this other person. The very next day I handed in my 2 week resignation. I used to work as a receptionist with a young woman named Larissa, who was really horrible at her job. Once a month she would would call out sick, but then would come in the next day and confess to me that she was having sex all day or just didn't feel like coming in. It didn't really affect me though, so I only complained to other co-workers. After about 4 months though, it was once, sometimes twice a week. By then my own workload had doubled, plus I was expected to handle hers when she wasn't there. I finally started complaining to my supervisor and found out that my co-workers felt so bad for me that they had been complaining on my behalf for months. But my supervisor was a punk who wouldn't fire people. So I had to deal with this another 4 months. They even gave me a review where they tried to blame me for poor productivity while simultaneously admitting that Larissa was the cause and gave me a warning. I was furious. A week later, I came down with a horrible case of strep throat. I called my supervisor and said that I absolutely couldn't come in. Besides being an immense pain, I was highly contagious and worked with two pregnant women. My supervisor told me that I couldn't call out because Larissa already had that day. I called Larissa, asked if she needed to be out and she said, my bad. Ooh hit somebody, I ain't mean to call out on you, but I'm high as a motherfucker right now so I can't even come in. Feel better boo boo. So I went in while in horrible pain. Around noon, the CEO called in while I was in the bathroom and it went to voicemail. He called my supervisor to ask why and she comes by and has the nerve to say that I shouldn't have left the phones unsupervised for so long. I stood up, grabbed my purse and gave my verbal 2 weeks notice. The CEO's executive assistant saw it all happen and convinced my supervisor reject my resignation and let me have the rest of that day and the next off. She would cover the phones. I didn't even care though because nothing would change until Larissa was gone. The executive assistant told the CEO who was P at my supervisor for not handling the Larissa situation earlier. Two weeks later she burped and farted in front of the heads of an insurance company, just saying my bad as she walked past. She was gone that Friday. I had a really bitchy boss who liked to pick a scapegoat at work and spend all of her time being mean to that person. For the first 6 months I was there she really liked me, but then she had to take a bunch of time off due to illness and I was in charge while she was gone. When she came back, she was worried that I was going to take her job, so she decided to be nasty to me. One afternoon she started yelling at me about a project I had completed. I had done everything correctly, but she would shout about one part of the project, I would defend myself, and then she'd start shouting about the next part, which I would also defend myself about. All of the instructions were written down, so I'd point to the customer's instructions and point out that I'd followed them to the letter. When she finally realized she had no reason to be shouting at me, she yelled well you shouldn't argue with a superior and stormed off. That was the day I decided I was going to quit. Back when I was 17 or 18 I got a job at Arby's. On my first, and last, day the people training me decided they should all go out and do something else and leave me in charge of the store alone. After filling a few orders, manning the drive through and the front I was done. When they came back a couple of hours later I explained that I had no intention of managing a store for what they were paying me and left, never to return, except for lunch later that week. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe, I publish new videos every day, until then, check another video.
Bye for now.